Hey guys, Kim here, Papa's fix it shop. Back in Arizona, came down here, all my soaking wet shoes and stuff from Alabama, it took about three hours for them to dry off. And so, back at it in the shop. And what you know what, I got back and the first thing I get is this guy. Can you see that? Let's zoom it down a little bit. Yeah, this is a steering column. Let me get it zoomed in a better. Uh, let's see now, just about there. So, yeah, I like that. So this is from a guy that's building a, like a street rod. It's actually pretty cool. It's a Franken Chevrolet. Um, it's kind of modeled after the old rat rods in the back in the day, but this is, it's an old fifties vintage Chevy sedan. It's got a kind of Frankenstein six liter motor in it. I'm not going to go into details because it's just way cool, but that's not what this is about. What this is about, this guy's doing a real sweet job of patching and welding and fixing and modifying the car. Went to put the steering column in and there was a slight issue with alignment because he's putting power steering where there never was power steering. He's putting a different steering column, different suspension. And when you get done, sometimes this the business end of the steering column needs to line up appropriately to the steering wheel. So ideally you want the steering wheel straight, right? Straight ahead. So if you get it cockeyed, the steering wheel is going to be off. You want that thing perfectly straight. Now it does have a tilt wheel, but that only goes up and down in the Z axis, I would say, you know, anyway, Zoom this in again, and essentially he drew. We drew a mark to find a scale. Let's see, so there's a black plastic bushing right here, of some kind. Looks like it comes out with not too much effort. I need to shorten this outer diameter tube. Let's see. Looks like two and a half inches, 65 millimeters, something like that. So I got to make this, I got to get, make this go away. It's got a slot here for something and I don't know what the slot's for. Although it appears to me to have some sort of a roll in indexing this tube when they're building it. I don't know, but I'm, I don't want to weld it where this hole is. So what I'm going to do is go up here, cut it in half and take this much out and then weld it back together. And then you need to shorten this piece pretty much where the splines just clear this plastic bushing. And that will give enough distance here to get the alignment we need for a universal joint to make the change in angle to the steering box. So, yeah. So we're gonna, we got actually four operations. First operation is, you have to disassemble this entire steering column Take all these switches and you know turn signal switches and emergency flasher and all that mechanism out. Disassemble the tilt mechanism and separate the two halves of the steering shaft because the only half I'm concerned with is the bottom half. Yeah, should be fun. So we gotta gut it out. Stand by. So, hmm, 
Looks like uh, outside snap ring. So we get some outside snap ring pliers. Now there is a little spring in there that you have to know about when you put this back together, but that's okay. See there? The old spring. Nice. All righty. Looks like an Allen wrench. Let's see what we got. Oh, it sure is. So this is kind of a, like a direct replacement for Chevy, you know, old timey ones. So it's got a lot of Chevy heritage. Hold on a sec. I don't like to have the screws down the holes. Now, if you notice, this is the bigger one that's on the pivot side on that one. So, pull this guy out. What do we got down here? <laughs> well, I'm going to get it out so you can see it. It's kind of cute, it's kind of cute in a little keechy kind of way. There's a bushing in there. So it's a bigger, next size up. Hmm. Bigger than that one. Ah, uh, that's cute. And then, and then he said, that is when it turned into metric. <clears throat> I don't know, it's a strange size cap screw socket head but any screw that holds it in is working right no telling if I really cared I could probably go ahead and uh Measure the threads, figure out if it's truly metric, but it's like a metric hole for the Allen wrench that takes it off. Pretty much like a Chevrolet. Yeah. So now there's a direct replica of a Chevy tilt wheel. Old one, you know, some various old age one. I'm sure it's not vintage, it's General Motors. Come on now. Pretty tight. I don't have a lever. It's going to be fun. Take some tension off of that spring. All right. 
So all I gotta do now is pull these out. I gotta find a, the screws. Let me zoom it in. If you ever encounter one of these guys in your daily travels, Let's see. So, right here is a hole, a pin. And there's another pin right there. Can you see that? Zoom this puppy in some more. There's a pin right here. It has threads inside. Now, if that's going to be a GM one, it's going to be an American size, like a national fine, like a 10 or something. Number 10 bolt. And you put a screw in there and you pop these out. Let me, I got to find the screws with the right thread. So I'm going to come back. Okay. Yeah. What do we got here? 632, 832. It's an 832 standard bolt. All right. Flip it out. Get around the other side. See, this is just a... 90 degree. Ninety degree pair of flyers. Pin falls out. Come on now. There is a little bit of spring tension on this guy, so Now, gotta go in here. There you go. All righty then. So. As you can see, I have a compression joint that's going to slip. In the case of a collision, this shaft will push down in here. It'll get shorter, maybe keep this from hitting you in the face. In this case, all I have to do is shorten this guy and collapse this far enough to compensate. Just got easier. Cool. Stand by. So, yeah. Cut this out. Basically 65 millimeters. Right here. I tacked it in three positions and then I dollied it with a hammer on a, on a flat plate to get it as close to get the edges nice and rolled in and I'm just going to seam it up. So, yeah. I think I'm going to put it on time lapse for that. Stand by. You know how sometimes you do things and you realize you had something to do it with that was better to do it with, but you forgot you had the thing to do it with? Yeah. Just about the time I was done welding this steering column, I remembered I had built a welding positioner. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, you gotta hurry, you, you forget shit. That's funny. So anyway, I'm gonna... I've got some flaws in it I don't like. I'm gonna sit here and, like 
fusion weld around it one more time to make it look prettier just so I can see I use my weld positioner <laughs> getting old sucks when you have mental flatulence but as you can see this guy's cranking it around nice and slow got it sitting on some v-blocks yeah Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm looking at it there's a little bit of uh error you know has to be if my lathe was big enough i would have done it in a lathe but gotta do you gotta what was that guy from canada said one time you gotta piss with a dick you're born with yep that's it Okay, so part two. So this guy here is already welded together and I've dressed it and it's past my 
rather rigorous testing requirements that involves looking at it. And now I have to shorten this piece. So this is the easy part. I mean, quite frankly, it's already got a compression joint here. In case anybody doesn't know this, is if you run into a brick wall and the steering box stops moving, this shaft will collapse into here for a certain amount of time so as to keep this piece from hitting you in the chest. <laughs> and most of the time it works. But I have to shorten this. And let me zoom it in. Right here, you see two black dots? What that is is holes that are drilled through this and they have plastic injected in there. It's to make it not want to slide in and out until you actually hit something. This particular case, the guy that's doing this car is fully aware of this and is going to put another one of these collapsing joints <coughs> between the steering column and the gearbox. So he has another one of these sections. So I'll just drill this plastic out and move this up and then I'll stick something in there, you know. I have some plastic welding rod that I might be able to force in there just to keep it from moving around. So that's the next step. So this guy, you can see, had these little plastic it, it might have been that they just pushed a plastic pin in there down through these holes to keep this guy from moving around. I have it set where it's all the way in. When it's all the way in, it's just the right length. So I'm going to drill another hole and put a couple of these plastic pins back in there just to keep it from you know, moving around. And uh, go from there. So this is like a hand job. Doesn't need to be a lot. I'm not going all the way through. Just a little bit. Let's see, small hammer. They, those plastics are going into that it's like a number 15 drill bit okay so let's see how it goes in there all right plastic won't go through so then I just trim them it's easy Okay, so now this guy is, it'll never be a compression safety feature because this is all the way in, but it won't fall out either. The new one that he'll place down below will take up the function of keeping you from getting yourself in more trouble than normal in a collision. There, that's what we're after. Take the pipe down this far and make sure this stub had to cut that much off the end of it. So now reassemble the tilt and I'm done. Cool! Hi guys. So, <clears throat> let me get, gain my composure. We're going to put this together. This thing looks very custom, but the guts are classic old General Motors tilt column that was in 
<laughs> I can't even begin to guess how many cars. And so this is the reassembly part. I'm going to want to zoom it in. Come on. Zoom it in. There it is. Okay. So, this is where the steering wheel goes. And this is where the part that tilts goes. Down in there. Something like that. And this is the part where I'm going to put it together for you. So, a couple things to point out. First, inside here are two sets of gear racks that are activated by a lever that you tilt the wheel with. And if you've got this apart, you have the lever. This one is an aftermarket part, so I don't have the leather lever, but it's basically a fine threaded quarter inch bolt thread. This happens to be a headlight adjuster from the same model Chevy's probably. So I can put that in there and articulate these two gear racks and that's the key so first thing I do is slip this guy down on here oh it'd be helpful if I put it the right direction you know come on Kim so oh yeah back up a little bit there's a little peg over here I don't see can you see this yeah right here this is where the big socket with the spring goes. So yeah, put this guy on. And I think now it's on there. And I can actually tilt it. So on each side, there are all these two pivot pins and they're still got the grease. And they go right in. So I usually leave these little screws in there. So I can coax them in. And pins like these that are carefully machined surfaces designed to articulate that have a pin that slides in and then is captured one way or another. The rule is it should be like love making. All the parts that just kind of want to slide together. And if it and if they don't you got to ask yourself why. Okay, so let's try this guy. There's up, down. Everything seems to be functioning the way I expect it to. This guy will be up a hair when it's tight. This guy will be in there, All right? So, next part is this. All right? And a word on this guy. If you try and put this one together with it pointed up, you're going to battle it. Put it where it's tilted as far away as you can. And then there's... Basically a little guy with tabs that fits in holes and only goes in one way and either to put it in with the trusty Phillips screwdriver See there So now 
up all the way. It likes being down. That's it. So now we put it in the down position. And we proceed to get this guy. You know, this turn signal assembly. It's got a cord. Cord goes down through. Just fits. Come on now. Got to make sure you got it right. helpful if I take the screw out, right? There you go. There you go. That's better. So this piece actually is what holds those pins in, so it's pretty important. Right? So Then it's these three big screws. These happen to be at least in this particular instance. The closest fitting a wrench I could find to it was a four millimeter. Torque them in sequence in some kind of pattern so you don't make one go too far, too fast, too soon, and you're good to go. These guys, they don't need to be really super tight. I mean, not crazy tight. There it is. I'm going to take a break for a sec. And I'll get this guy set in there. Stand by. I did it. I did it. I did it. Apparently that's the name of whoever made this. Sounds distinctly... I don't know. I don't want to say anything to insult anybody, but it seems strange. Anyway, it's a very high-quality friggin' replica of a Chevrolet part, so I'm impressed. With the sticker. That's probably the guy that bought it and sold it, you know? Anyway, there's a little plastic bushing goes on this long guy because it actually, this is the emergency flasher. It has to end up lining up the hole right here. And up down here is a pivot. Over here is the turn signal switch the, where the arm goes in there. You got to line this guy up. Get it to sit onto its little plays. Oh no. There it is. Right about there. This particular spark you gotta kind of, it's plastic. So like I always say about tiny plastic parts in automotive applications is that 
if it doesn't just set right in there where it's supposed to be and want to just screw in with no problem back it out and figure it out because something is wrong you should be able to get that guy down and in this case I'm doing it I'm not even hitting the threads wait a minute I know what it is yeah two of these guys are short screws and one's long the long screw is the one that's on the top if you're sitting in the driver's seat actually so it goes down through where a longer bushing is remember you putting that in anyway you should be able to set these things in like you're watching me and they go right to the bottom of the threads of the screw with very little complaint since this is all brand new parts it's perfect and I'm using an Allen wrench on a on a ratchet don't do that use a screwdriver because it is far too easy to over torque one of these guys with a ratchet right so now it's in there Let's see what it does Let's see if I can move it oh, no. there's that's centered right left turn you got to do this carefully it's it's all designed to be actuated by this place and since I don't have the lever in the screw it's you don't want to mess it up but right there's right turn left turn right turn left turn cool nobody's working so then it's this guy the horn button the horn brush all right and this one I have to hold the shaft up at the same time that I do that so I got to find a tool hold on So, how do I do this, right? The shaft wants to be flopping around because there's bearings in there. And those bearings basically sit on this guy down in here, right? and it's all held in with a snap ring so I have to compress this spring at the same time I hold the shaft up right 